This is your news source evening bulletin for today, Tuesday, the 31st day of May in the year 2022. I'm Gordon Mosley. Here's what we're tracking tonight. President Irfan Ali moved ahead with the appointment of members of the Police Service Commission and the Integrity Commission today, even as the opposition threatened legal action over the need for meaningful consultation. The President said the members of the Police Service Commission were already approved by the National Assembly. Three of the four members took the oath of office today. President Ali also said the members that he nominated for the Integrity Commission are all upstanding members of the society. I've said before that in chartering this course of one Guyana, we will seek out from among us those who have the credentials and are willing and ready to serve at every level in moving our country forward. It will not and cannot be based on any other principle but that of fairness, justice, integrity, and most of all, confidence. As president, I have the confidence that the people appointed today, the Guyanese appointed today, not only have the skills, but they have the character to ex execute the duties the, they are called upon to execute. For the Police Service Commission, Pastor Patrick Finley will serve as its chairman. The other members are Mark Conway, Hakeem Mohammed, and Ernesto Chuafat. The Police Service Commission is tasked with the appointment and discipline of senior members of the Guyana Police Force. The life of the last Police Service Commission ended in controversy last year after the President suspended all of the members of the Commission. The President's action is now engaging the attention of the court. He was accused by the last chairman of the Police Service Commission of attempting to interfere with the work of the Commission by requesting promotions for specific members of the Guyana Police Force. The Integrity Commission is tasked with administering and enforcing the Integrity Commission Act, which comprises a code of conduct and declarations of income, assets and liabilities for persons in public life. The commission will be chaired by business executive Chandra Gajraj, with the other members being attorney Kim Kai Thomas, Mohammed Hanif, Hardish Tiwari, and Wayne Bowman. More news coming up in just a moment. How fast is fiber? Think fast. GGT Fiber has three packages with download speeds of 50, 100, and 150 megabits per second. That's fast enough to stream movies and music, to chat with Gran and Fran, to study and more. What would you do? Upgrade to GTT Fiber today and don't get left behind tomorrow. Plans are moving forward for the establishment of the landmark Gas to Energy project. Gas will be piped from the Stabrook block operations to shore. The project is expected to cut electricity rates by more than half and deliver significant benefits to Guyanese. Get in the game with Buster! Win a full gaming setup! Xbox X! Gaming chair! Gaming speaker and headset! Or any of over 60 weekly prizes! Like Oculus Quest 2! Mini 2 Drone! Nintendo Switch! And many more top gaming prizes! Check below for our details!
Opposition leader Aubrey Norton today threatened that he will move to the court if the president decides to move ahead with constitutional appointments without the completion of consultations as required by the Constitution. They might go ahead, I don't doubt it. They seem to want to go ahead, but it will be challenged in the courts. That is the bottom line. Because we know what is meaningful consultation. It is not a choice of the government to be involved in meaningful consultation. It is mandated by the Constitution. And therefore, it should be done in keeping with the law. During a press conference this morning, the opposition leader said that the president and his government do not appear serious about having meaningful consultation on the various constitutional appointments. He made reference to an agreement and joint statement for the two sides to meet within a week of their first meeting. And the call for that meeting only coming from the government more than three weeks later. Mr. Norton said he is ready to move the process forward, but everything must be done in keeping with the constitution and the law. Let us note that in the in the joint statement, I was careful to ensure that it is placed that all of this will uh, operate in the context of the constitution and the law, and that is what we seek to ensure. The opposition leader noted that cases that Guyana took before the Caribbean Court of Justice addressed the issue of meaningful consultation. President Air Finale on Monday lashed out to the opposition leader for not attending a meeting to continue the consultations. The opposition leader had indicated that in addition to receiving late notice for the meeting, it conflicted with his schedule. He has accused the government of not showcasing good faith in the process. The government has accused him of being immature in his approach to the discussions. Over 5,000 fisher folk from across the country will benefit from a one-off $150,000 cash grant as an immediate step by the government to assist them in offsetting some of the rising expenses associated with their trade. President Irfanali announced the assistance initiative this afternoon and explained that the government has already put systems in place to assist the country's fishery sector. The president said although the fishing industry has been turning around, his government is cognizant of the fact that all is still not well in the industry. That is, we're going to help you with a one-off grant of $150,000. This is an immediate step that we are taking to make a direct transfer to you, to assist you in addition to all that we're doing to expand the industry. Mr. Ali notes that it is important that the fishing industry gets on board as the country looks to be the food supply hub of the Caribbean. Similarly, we want to expand with the use of technology, opportunities to deal with the production of prawns, opportunity to expand the brackish water strip industry, to deal with the Baname variety. And the government has agreed that we are going to procure equipment to help you with the capital costs of developing these farms so that we can help you to increase your production. And Agriculture Minister Zulfikar Mustafa said the government will be forging deeper partnerships with fisher folks across the country in an effort to preserve the industry which has been facing several challenges in recent years and one which has been contributing to the country's economy both at the family and national levels. Although the president have made this one off grant to the fisher folks, we will still continue to work with you all as he rightly said to work in other areas, for example, aquaculture, to work to see how we can um, help our um, fisher folks to supplement their income with other areas in the agriculture sector. In recent months, the government has introduced several measures to assist with the rising cost of living and rising prices for fertilizer and other commodities. In instances where taxes were removed, consumers are still complaining that the benefits have not been passed down to them. Almost seven months after the Ghana Court of Appeal in a two-to-one decision ruled that it has jurisdiction to hear the election petition case which was thrown out by the Chief Justice for late service to the former President David Granger, the attorneys representing the government and the Vice President have moved to the CCJ to appeal the ruling of the Court of Appeal. The Caribbean Court of Justice held a case management conference for the case today and set timelines and deadlines for arguments and submissions.
During today's case management conference, Justice Witt declared that because of the nature of the case, it is his view that it should be dealt with expeditiously. The appellate in the case has been given until next Tuesday to file and serve their joint record of appeal. Written submissions are to be filed by the 14th of June, and all parties will then make oral arguments on the 19th of July before the court makes its ruling. In January last year, the Chief Justice Roxanne George dismissed the case because the petition was served late on former President David Granger, who was listed as one of the respondents. The petition was filed by APNU AFC Coalition supporters Monica Thomas and Brennan Nurse. They are asking the court to nullify the outcome of the 2nd of March 2020 general and regional elections and declare that President David Finale is illegally occupying the office. An appeal was then filed by the opposition against the Chief Justice's ruling and then appeals to the Attorney General moving a motion to have the case struck out completely. But the Court of Appeal by a majority vote ruled that it could hear preliminary arguments in the case. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony wants people to know that using hookers and vaping is just as bad as smoking cigarettes and is also harmful to the body. Ghana joined the rest of the world today in observing World No Tobacco Day. The health minister said while many persons, especially young people, have been turning to alternative forms of smoking, the harm remains the same. You see, one of the things that people have been trying to market is to use uh, different forms of um, getting nicotine into the body. Nicotine is very addictive. Nicotine would cause um, psychological and eventually physical addiction. Um, or physical dependence and therefore whether you're vaping or whether you're using a hookah or one of these other uh, methods that are being popularized the fact is that uh, you are consuming substances that are dangerous to your health it was pointed out that the dangers of smoking the alternative methods are documented. Almost 12% of Ghana's population is listed as smokers. There are existing laws that prohibit smoking in public places and cater for the correct labeling of cigarette packets with images of the effects of smoking. The Minister of Health reminded that smoking can damage the lungs and persons who are smokers are at a higher risk of serious illness if they contract COVID-19. Coronavirus, when uh, you get infected, you know, it goes through the upper airway and then eventually makes its way down to the lower airway and disseminate to different organs of the body. So given how it is transmitted and get into the body, one can see the linkages between coronavirus disease and persons who smoke. And if you have underlying conditions, these can obviously it can create more problems for a smoker. So it is something that smokers should bear in mind that um, they would be at increased risk based on their underlying illnesses and their, their high risk with smoking already. Dr. Anthony also said even if smokers recover from COVID-19, the long-term impact on their health could be detrimental. Given that smokers would have a lot of underlying issues, as I've mentioned, uh, they're more at high risk for cancers, more at high risk for cardiovascular diseases, um, more at high risk for chronic um, obstructive pulmonary disorders and so forth. The Ministry of Health plans to continue with its efforts to get more persons to quit smoking. There was not a dry eye at the Lycan funeral home this midday as family members gathered to bid their final goodbye to the three children who perished in last Wednesday's fire at their home in Makabagdam. The char remains of the children, 8-year-old Timothy Kippins, 6-year-old Tristan Kippins, and 1-year-old Zelaya Flu, were in three colored caskets, two blue caskets bearing the remains of the boys and the pink one with the remains of their sister. The mother of the children, Tracy Flew, broke down in tears repeatedly as she screamed out for her children. 
She was offered words of comfort from the opposition leader Orbe Norton and government ministers Dr. Vindi Prasad and Sonia Parag, who all attended the intimate funeral service, where family members reflected on their loss and asked for support and prayers. The three children perished in the late night fire at their small wooden house after being left alone at home by their mother, who was working night duty as a security guard. The Ghana Fire Services investigation has found that a fire was caused by an electrical issue at the house. The fire service found it difficult to reach the scene of the blaze as there is no roadway leading to the squatting area, just shortcuts. The young mother remains devastated by her loss. The husband of murdered New Central High School teacher Omega Holt remains on the run as he has emerged as the prime suspect in the murder. Investigators are searching for the husband, Clarence Farley. The man's car was found abandoned in a lumber yard in the village of Coverdale on the east bank of Demerara. He was last seen last Monday when he took the couple's baby to one of the dead woman's sisters and asked her to keep the child as he was taking up a job in the interior region. The sister and other relatives became suspicious of the woman's whereabouts when she never called about her baby and no one could make contact with her. Eventually, one of her brothers visited the Korean West Coast of Marara house and stumbled on the partly decomposed body of the 39-year-old woman. A post-mortem examination found that the teacher died from blunt trauma to the head and bleeding of the brain. It is suspected that she was beaten to death. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of the husband is being asked to contact the nearest police station or call 911. Have you heard the news? The CPL is back. Yes! The finals coming to Guyana. Absolutely brilliant! It's going to be a carnival of cricket. It's going to be a carnival of cricket. It's going to be a carnival of cricket. Like Oculus Quest 2, Mini 2 Drone, Nintendo Switch, and many more top gaming prices. Check below for our details. Fuel it up and drive, super, 95. Fuel it up and drive, super, 95. Protect your fuel system, boy. High mileage and performance, boy. Guyot Super 95 Gasoline gives you more reasons to drive and is available at 56 service stations nationwide. For affordable price, high performance, and high mileage, choose Guyol's Super 95 Gasoline. Across the region tonight, at least 35 people died amid heavy rainfall in northeastern Brazil as downpours lashed to major cities and the Atlantic coast in what is the South American nation's fourth major flooding event in five months. In one state, at least 33 people lost their lives as rains provoked landslides that wiped away hillside urban neighborhoods, according to the state's official Twitter account. Another 765 people were forced to leave their homes at least temporarily according to the state government. Authorities in a neighboring state had registered two deaths, according to the Brazil Federal Emergency Service. Back in December and early January, dozens were killed and tens of thousands displaced when the rains hammered Bahia State, also located in northeastern Brazil. At least 18 people died in flooding in the southeastern state of Sao Paulo in January. In February, torrential downpours in the mountains of Rio de Janeiro killed over 230 people. In the Bahamas, the U.S.-based rating agency Moody's says the Bahamian government fiscal consolidation projections face multiple risk due to the absence of any tax increases in the multi-million dollar national budget that was unveiled in the parliament last Wednesday.
Prime Minister Philip Davis presented a multi-billion dollar tax-free budget to Parliament as the country begins to rebound from the impact of COVID-19 and now having to grapple with great challenges and opportunities occasioned by a changing global environment. The Prime Minister told legislators that this is a time of great challenge for the country, but also a time of great opportunity. According to Davis, the budget projects a significant rebound in the Bahamian economy and that total revenue is projected to be over 2.8 million US dollars, representing a 19.9% increase over the last fiscal year, when the economy was in the early stages of an economic rebound of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Prime Minister said regarding expenditure, his administration intends to spend 3.3 million US dollars, with recurrent expenditure projected to be just over 2.9 million US dollars, and capital expenditure will stand at around 371.1 million US dollars. And finally, tonight, international news. EU leaders say they will block most Russian oil imports by the end of this year to punish Moscow for invading Ukraine. The EU-wide ban will affect oil that arrives by sea around two-thirds of imports, but not pipeline oil following opposition from Hungary. Poland and Germany have also pledged to end pipeline imports, meaning a total of 90% of Russian oil will be blocked. European Council Chief Charles Michel said the deal cut off a huge source of financing for the Russian war machine. It is part of a sixth package of sanctions approved at the summit in Brussels, which all 27 member states have had to agree on. Russia currently supplies 27% of the EU's imported oil and 40% of its gas. The European Union pays Russia around 430 billion US dollars a year in return. So far, no sanctions on Russian gas exports to the EU have been put in place. And that's your news source evening bulletin for tonight. I'm Gordon Mosley reporting and encouraging you to stay safe.